Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to help Larry the Sheep calculate false positive and false negative. Coming up. A virus is present in one of 250 of a flock of sheep. To make testing of the virus possible, a quick test is used on each sheep. However, the test is not completely reliable. So let's say Farmer Joe takes Larry the sheep to get tested for lymphadenitis, okay, common infectious disease in, uh, in sheep. Now the vet, after doing the test, can either give a positive result, in which case Larry the sheep does have the disease, or get a negative test result, in which case Larry thankfully doesn't have the disease. However, these tests aren't completely reliable. There's always a margin of error, in which case there are four possible outcomes. So let's consider these outcomes. So if Larry the sheep does actually have the disease and gets a positive test result, that's good because we can now address that situation, give him the right medication, and so he can, you know, get rid of the lymphadenitis and have a healthy life. Now let's say Larry gets tested and he has, he has the disease, but he has a negative test result. That's a bad thing because poor Larry has the disease but just doesn't know it. In which case, poor Larry doesn't know what he's in for. We call that a false negative since it's a negative test result. Now if Larry doesn't have the disease and the test result's also negative, that's good. So we know that we don't need to take any further action. The final outcome, if Larry does not have the disease and tests positive, that's a bad result. We call that a false positive. And that's bad for Larry because the vet may now administer medication for Larry that may have its own side effects. Now let's make sense of some of these percentages. An infected sheep tests positive in 85% of cases and a healthy sheep tests positive in 5% of cases. So an infected sheep tests positive 85% of the cases, which means the remainder 0.15 or 15% uh, will test negative. And a healthy sheep tests positive in 5% of cases. So if you don't have the disease, i.e. you're healthy, and you have a positive test result, is 5% or 0 0.05. In which case, 0.95 or 95% will test negative. Now in completing this table, we haven't taken into consideration what percentage of the population are actually infected. So considering a virus is present in one of 250 of a flock of sheep, we can say that 0 0.004 have the disease, in which case 0 0.996 don't have the disease. Now we can use these to complete our probability tree diagram. So branch one, we're looking at um, whether they have the disease or not. And then branch two, we're looking at the test accuracy. So those who do have the disease, 0 0.004. Those who do not have the disease, 0 0.996. An infected sheep tests positive in 85% of cases, so 0.85, which leaves us with 0 0.15. And a healthy sheep tests positive in 5% of cases, so 0 0.05, which leaves us with a remainder of 0 0.95. Now to find the probability, we multiply the outcomes of each branch. 0 0.04 times 0 0.85 gives us 0 0.0034, and we do the same to complete the rest of the branches. Now at this stage, you want to check that all of the probabilities add up to 1. If this doesn't add up to 1 or 100%, then you need to go back and check your numbers. So to make sense of this probability, it states that a sheep does test positive for lymphadenitis, the infectious disease, which is 0.34%. The second outcome, um, the sheep has the disease and receives a negative test result which is 0.06%. So Larry doesn't have the disease and gets a negative test result, 94.62%. And then finally, doesn't have the disease and gets a positive test result, which is 4.98%. Now in terms of which one of these are actually good and which ones are bad, we need to consider whether it's a true positive, which is a good result. False negative, you do really have the disease, however you get a negative test result. Now that has a bad implication. A true negative, you do not have the disease and the test indicates you don't. And then finally, a false positive, you don't have the disease and you get a positive test result. Now in each case, you need to consider what's worse, a false negative or a false positive. Comment in the section below, what do you think is worse and why do you think it's worse? Is it a false negative or a false positive? 
Right, let's look at some questions now. Calculate the probability that the test is correct. So the probability you have the disease and you test positive, or the probability you don't have the disease and you test a negative. So the, both of these outcomes um, are correct. So 0 0.0034 plus 0 0.9462 gives us a 94.96% that the test is correct. Looking at another question, given that Larry receives a positive test result, what is the probability that he isn't actually infected? Here we're looking for a false positive. So first we're looking at whether Larry has the disease and has received a positive test result, or Larry doesn't have the disease and receives a positive test result. So we're looking at a yes and positive or a no and positive. So it, given that there is a positive test result, what is the probability that Larry isn't actually infected? So we add this probability and this probability, the fact that the test is positive, but we're looking for the outcome that Larry isn't infected. The calculation gives us 93.6%. So we have a happy Larry. Right, so I hope that it helped you figure out false positive and false negative. Uh, thanks for watching, drop me a like, and I'll see you next time.